Yo, what is up, guys? We're going to be checking out Nagato's new video. He's running three Catastrophe. Well, he's just running a Catastrophe team, but he's running Green Shin in the front, uh, Awaken Lilia, Mono, and Awaken, or I should say, Easton of Authority in the back. So if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you click the like button and subscribe, and go to over to Nagato's channel and try to get this man to 2,000 or 250,000 subs. He's on a mission to try to pass up the developer's YouTube channel or the Nagat or the uh, the Seven Deadly Sins YouTube channel. And I think it'd be funny if he actually surpassed them. So if you guys go over there, hit that uh, subscribe button, hit the like button on this video because I do support all catastrophe content. I think catastrophes are an outst outstanding out uh, like set of characters that have a lot of potential. And we're gonna go ahead and watch this video out. Uh, I run base Green Valenti in the front personally because I find this team to be more defensive based when you're free to play but if you have a wallet i can see why you'd want to go with a more dps based also make sure you go to his uh check out his gamer subs he does have a code for gamer subs so go ahead and check that out so let's go ahead and go straight in this video all right so with naomi having all the holy relics except goddess liz that's the only holy relic i don't have in the game and probably won't have for a while i uh i i'm taking some liberties in trying to find some wackier more uh, different sort of teams and um, i think this is an interesting one i wanted to make a catastrophe build that actually has good dps in the first turn because one thing that i find that i don't particularly enjoy about using the catastrophe team is that i feel as though i have such terrible dps in the first two turns I could I could see why he thinks this because with uh with with if you're running Greenville in the center, you're not really going for the DPS build, you're going for the more sustainable build to build up mono. I mean Lilia obviously will do decent damage turn one because she's got Mono's corrosion the proc, but like she needs more than one debuff on the enemy to really pop off, which is why I use Green Valenti's defense down card, but even with that, it's still not enough to like one shot someone unless it's Keo turn one if you hit the crits. So I, I kind of get I get what he's saying there, but this this is going to require you getting a lot of resources into your characters because I feel like if you're going to go with this style of build, you need Green Shin or Mono to have Green Sario Link, so that way you can get more debuffs from uh for once for you know Lily to work better, and then Shin also works off debuffs when he has his Holy Relic, right? And the problem with this team is well, not really the problem. The the thing is if you go second with this team. Even if you have evasion food, if the if the player you're fighting is smart, they just kill Shin turn one. Shin is a glass cannon. Like even if you put him in like HP defense, he can get one shotted by the Trader Meliodas. Uh, Trader Meliodas turn one. So even if you went with the let's say you win evasion food, if you get sealed by a seal team, you're screwed. If you get uh, if you get if they bait the evasion with like Gother bombs and they target Shin, Shin's dead. But if you go first, this team's got so much potential. But you're, you're gambling at if your CC is high enough. But if it does work, it works well. I, I'm sure of it, because Shin is an out... Shin's actually a pretty good character. He's got outdated stats. ...of the fight. Not necessarily terrible, just in comparison to other teams. And I think Shin is, like, perfect for this. Green Shin, more specifically, I was thinking of being Red Shin. Red Shin can also work, to be honest. But I was thinking of uh, bringing Green Shin. Because with Green Shin, we have that rank up. And then we also have, you know, all these AoEs combined with Mono's AoE, Lilia's AoE, and then just two more AoEs from Shin. And all of a sudden, we, <laughs> we have, like, this insane AoE DPS. And so our team is always strong from turn one, deep, like, damage-wise. Mm -hmm. And will progressively get stronger as the turns go on, defensively-wise. He just ruined that team with Shin. And, uh... The AoEs is pretty impressive. With the East in the back giving us damage reduction. Now this can work, I think, either using CC food like I am for going first, or dodge food for going second. I'm mainly using CC food for the sake of video. Just for you guys, I will go and make a video with this team whenever the geared rank is changed, and I will show you that I don't think Evade Food is a really good option for this team if the player you go against is smart. Now, I could be wrong, but just call it a hunch, okay? Just call it a hunch that I don't think Shin's going to live very long if we go second with Evade Food. Because I actually just want to go first to get it done quicker. <laughs> but it can most definitely work as a going second sort of build um it's just that you know for for the entertainment of seeing you know the the damage 
on screen, I think that the uh, the going first sort of strategy works out better. And you know, the, I think Sauriel Link just helped us so well with so many of these scenes because turn one, I do one attack with Mono, and then all of a sudden my Lilia passive is just maxed out, right? Because I have mm -hmm. the debuff that Mono herself is providing, the corrosion, and I have the debuff from Sauriel's passive. And for those who don't know, Sariel's passive makes it to where you're nerfing crit chance and crit damage on the enemy. I think it's like, it's got set numbers per like stack, but it gets pretty nutty after a few stacks. And like, if your character relies on critting or has cleave, they kind of get cucked pretty hard. So I would throw that on Shin. I think that'd be a great option for Shin because, well, I guess you could throw it on Mono too. But like with Shin, he's got nothing but AoEs, right? But to be fair, you could throw Tarmio Link on Shin as well, and that'd be pretty okay. I don't know, this team, this team build is very, very good, but I'm horrified for free-to-plays to get baited into this, because if you go second against a good player, Shin dies turn one, unless they're really dumb, and go for Lilia with their HP defense on. Because I don't think this, this team would work as good as an ungeared, because they rely on gear to get their stats, but like in geared, without any rules set, I feel like this team would be actually pretty solid if you're able to get away with going first, because how much damage potential you have within the corrosion, the, uh, the debuffs with the Sariel as well, and then on top of it, Lily dissolving so they can't ult rush you. So turn one, this team has got a lot of utility with AoE damage, and I like that a lot. It's just, you're playing the risk game if you go second. I, I'm really, like, kind of excited to see what's gonna be Tarmiel's relic. Uh, no, relic. Tar <laughs> I mean, Tarmiel's relic as well, but Tarmiel's um, Link, what is he gonna give? you know, that it's going to be, like, comparable. Because I'm, like, actively choosing to use Green Sauriel Link over Red Sauriel. And Red Sauriel Link is phenomenal, right? And if I'm choosing to use this Link over it, that means that this Link is also, like, amazing, right? So I really wonder what the uh, the next Tarmiel, the new name Tarmiel that we're probably getting uh, sooner rather than later, because we've already seen him in the story, is going to actually do. But more... The new name Tarmiel better have something good for a grace because, like, Blue's Tarmiel's grace is still, like, one of the best graces in the game. Arguably the best for defensive, like, cases because you heal so much based off your, like, defense, right? So I don't know if they can even one-up it. I guess they could do something with damage reduction, but damage reduction in this game is a little goofy. I, I don't know what the grace is going to do. Like, it provides you defense on your team. <laughs> like, what, what is it going to bring? Moreover, I just really am curious to see how you're going to... This team can progress because, um... As it is, this blue Lilia, right? As much as people have been using her more for these um, different builds. Oh, I just realized he has a blue skinny king and red guffer. Um, as much as people have been using, you know, I just lost my train of thought just thinking of green skinny king. Uh, <laughs> for like, you know, trailer Mally and stuff like that. The way this unit is built was to help catastrophes. Her passive... Mm -hmm boosts catastrophes like i really wonder like the new version of shin they're gonna that we're gonna be getting eventually uh new monos i'm excited for the new mono i potentially think new mono like the awakened mono could be next because she's already got all her color units but that's the same thing for roxy right roxy's been sitting there with all her units for a second so either awaken roxy or awaken mono could be the next awakened unit I personally really, really, really like Awakened Mono because she's my favorite character. And her potential, since she's already very, very good on her stats outside of her pierce rate, is going to be insane. She's going to be a fast level character in my mind. Like, when I when I just see her getting Awakening, they're going to be buffing her stats, which are already really good. And on top of that, she's already got an insane unit. Yeah, she takes time to build up, but when she's built up, she's, like, fast level good. Like, she, she can 1v1 fast really nicely. So, Awakened Mono is going to be crazy. Now, Awakened Roxy... I don't really know what to expect from her because like she's a very decent unit but like that's like all all the red blue green uh like roxy's are decent they're just not insane right so i don't really know what i'm expecting for roxy since her substats are actual like her, her stats are also kind of mid at best but even though she get a stat buff I don't, I don't really know what to expect from her. she could be insane though like don't get me wrong awaken roxy could be insane new version of mono as well uh, whatever new Camillas we're getting. And just take a look at more of uh, that man just the said stats Camilla. of some of these characters. Uh, but man, we, we can we can get like some really crazy characters um, in the upcoming months and years, whatever, uh, with, do with those things in mind, right? Um, let me 
I imagine the next catastrophe unit, if it's not an awakened like new unit, new unit, it's probably gonna be like blue Shin or red Valenti, right? If not, we could get a blue awakened Easton. Uh, but like I think realistically speaking, since it's been it's been a hot second since we got a catastrophe banner, I think it could legitimately be a new awakened unit. And if it is, I really hope it's mono. I go with this. Can, should I go for his ult? I think I'm just gonna go for or his Shin. Ult I'm just gonna triple attack with Shin here. Yeah, I'm just gonna triple attack with Shin. I mean, it doesn't hurt because he <laughs> he hits really hard. Oh, it's gonna kill Lily. Not Lily. Uh, it's gonna kill um, guys, Liz. No. Oh, that's unfortunate. It's okay. I I wanted to kill Goddess Liz so that you know King would die there. Moreover, I think we can definitely get a new like back character because mm -hmm. as much as uh, it's not bad. The uh, whatever is going on with with the Red Easton, um, it's not fantastic. I wouldn't say it's great, right? I can see why he says that because it's more defensive base and it does take some time to build those orbs up. I don't think Red Easton is like I, tr I don't think she's trash. I think she's a really good character for what she's designed for, which is keeping your team alive. And whenever you bring her to the field, she's a good stall unit to provide you with D ranks on the cards, which of course is going to be better the fewer enemies there are in the field. And she does have instant dissolve, so you can take away ultimate gauge. She's a great support character. I kind of wish her Holy Relic was built more towards the supporting than it is the healing. Even though the Holy Relic is actually pretty solid, I think it should have been gave some stats to the catastrophes instead from the back. I, I, I feel like on a Holy Relic, like, I think 15% would have been fine for stats, like, related buff, to, uh, you know, attack-related stats. Uh, or just give us a new unit that can go on the field or in the back that gives us actual, like, uh, attack related stats. I, I just built a red base for Lenti, like, concept design yesterday, or whenever I posted it. It's literally like the day before I'm watching this. And I gave her 35% attack related stats for, I mean, my bad. I, I gave her a attack related stats passive that was based off her defense by 35% or whatever. Like, it's a really interesting design for a base red Valenti. If you guys want to go check it out, it's on my channel. It's not bad, but I wouldn't say it's great. Um,. This card doesn't do as much. Actually, this card does more damage than the debuff card. I'm gonna go with this. Ah, oh, maybe I should have double attacked the Keo. We're, we're gonna be okay, I think. We're gonna be okay. We're gonna be okay. I just need to. Um, mm, I just need my characters to die in one turn and we're gonna be okay. Mm, not terrible cards. Could have been better, but not terrible. Now let's see what they're doing. Lily attack, Lily attack, Melly attack? No. Are they going to go for Shin? Because I see the Kyo. Huh. Wow, going for Shin. See, that's that's kind of like what I expected. It's just to kill Shin. Because like Shin is the easiest target on the field to kill. Because he's going to be the... He's, his stats are the worst out of all of them. And he's not really good defensively. Like, he's decent. But he's not like insane by any means. So that was, that, that's about, that was my main concern for this team. Is that Shin just kind of dies turn 2 or 3, right? Shin. I actually didn't expect that. <laughs> uh, that corrosion damage though. I kind of wish we had a Shin that gave AoE infects to this team, so that way they couldn't heal back from the corrosion. I feel like an AoE infect on the next character would be huge for this team, because one, it's a debuff, two, it prevents healing, and three, it would be very, very good for using on the field. So you just apply Mono's corrosion, the infect, and then like Lilia damage, and they wouldn't be able to heal it back. That would be insane for damage as well, for consistency. Because like some characters like Tra or Trade Meliodas can just one shot their health all the way back up from one ability, you know, one one single shot or one single target, he's full health. So the infect would be super good for this team. Let's go with. Um... I'm gonna do this, this, and this. Can Mono get a crit off? Oh yeah, easily. Oh yes, yeah, she can. Wow. How when she works, she works. How much is Lilia's crit resistance? I actually don't know. I actually have no That man's idea. critting I with mean, everyone. Mono has very high crit chance, but more than usual, Mono chooses to not crit a single hit, right? I wonder if he finally rolled some crit chance into her uh, gear, like just 
two rolls of two point or four point five or whatever it is for that nine percent increase or whatever it is. Like you get one max roll on each piece, and she starts filling like a whole new unit. I, I'm telling you guys, try it out. But yeah, honestly, it's crazy. How, like catastrophes are a team that are like they have such potential because of the whole like you know units boosting each other. We need mm -hmm. like a Shin that specialized in boosting catastrophes. I feel like. Uh, it doesn't even have to be Shin. It could be Shin, Roxy, or a new Valenti. It could be the new Easton, or a new Waking Easton. Like, any one of the units that are not Lily or Mono can fit this middle slot just fine that can boost the team. Valenti, Easton, Roxy, Camilla. Like, it's any one of those four units could literally fit in this team squad right right there in the center. It would be so good. Um, I mean, I love this Shin, obviously. But, you know, being more realistic, I think that we definitely should get a shin that does more than just damage and actually provides like the team with something like just more characters that provide the team with something like and again like easton does provide the team with something obviously she provides a damage reduction but i just don't like the way damage reduction works in this game it's just very confusing to even notice it working it's not that it's like I get what he's saying. It's like it's hard to tell if it works or not, but I've tested it from like different backliners, and I can say this: Awaken Easton's passive makes a bigger impact than what you might notice if you were to run someone like Red Base Easton. Red Base Easton's got a very similar passive where it's single target damage. Like you take less damage from single targets. That's not as good as the actual just like get your ultimate engage and get a natural damage reduction now if you pair it with green base volenti as well you're going to notice your team's not taking much damage once you have full orbs and you're not even full like just most of your orbs are in your like like this maybe just two or three more you're not going to be taking any damage from mostly anything except from like trader melee like amplifies amplifies are the only thing that can really destroy your team like i think a stat buffer would be much better like like a, a stat buffer like a, boom 24 even 30 percent mm -hmm. basic stat boost for catastrophes only i think is on the like on on the options honestly i honestly think it's on the horizon from the next shin to be honest i feel like shin would be the perfect unit like blue base shin could be the perfect unit to be a full on support that gives you stats to your team i think that's it's it's on the horizon guys i'm telling you one of these units that are going to come out that are new doesn't have to be awakened. Just a newer OC since they've been building with the catastrophe passives are going to give this team some type of attack related stats. It's going to be so cool. Honestly, because it's such a limited category of characters, right? Mm hmm. Like at least 20, 25, even 24. I say, I say the number 24 specifically because, you know, it's, it's, it's fast Zaldrus's, right? But yeah, I think this, um, this could take, you know, in a few months. Bro, thank you. Well, I'm pretty sure within the next month we should be getting a new OC banner or, or catastrophe banner, so even sooner, I would hope. I really hope they have a good plan for the next character because this next character can literally make this team like the best team in the game. Well, Bond is Bond exists. Obviously, I can't ignore Bond, but like it's going to be like it's already competing with the Trader Millie team easily, like with the green base plenty. If you give it just a centerpiece that's like DPS and you can actually kill Bond, oh man, that'd be so funny. Can I can I get my matches in? Oh yeah, I just hope that from now on, whenever they make catastrophe characters, they actually, you know, make them buff the the team because, mm -hmm. for the most part, the catastrophe characters that don't buff the actual catastrophe team are either good for farming, I guess. You know, Green Shin is like <laughs> god for farming, or they are just a zero. Like I think. In I agree. If you look at Mono. Waken Easton and, well, in this case, Blue Awaken Lilia, all the units that are on the team because they have, like, a catastrophe pass. So, but if you're looking at other units, you're just kind of filling the team in with decent filler options. Like, Base Valenti is a good option because of the way her pass will work, but it's not, like, catastrophe exclusive. So it's, she's not as insane as she could be if she had an actual insane, ex like, catastrophe exclusive passive, which is why I agree. I actually agree with this. I do think catastrophes should just have catastrophe passives so they can be a bit stronger. You know, the the Roxies are just so outdated, like all of them. Like even like blue, green Roxy, like I tried them, you know, here and there. 
and every time, even, you know, with, I'm talking with the Holy Relic, obviously, they're just so disappointing, you know? If Blue Roxy, instead of having that passive, instead of, like, she was, like, a booster for catastrophes, like, 20 per 20%, 20% 20 is very good. 20% is very good. I would gladly take 20%. If she was a 20% booster, she would be so good. Yeah. Such a fantastic character, right? Just chuck her in the back, and then if she comes in, she can still, like, do decent damage. She would be able to attack seal and still build up her ultimates and still hit pretty hard. I'll say, I agree. It would be a lot better than that evasion passive. I 100% agree. Just because of her holy relic, right? Because she just had really high stats. If she was a, a, just a booster for the team, it would have been so good. But instead, they chose her to make the way they did. But hopefully, you know, a newer version of Roxy, like a different named Roxy, with like even better stats, and then give, the, give her a holy relic for whatever. Because, you know, Lilia, this Lilia. Got her holy relic. Did she get it like before she came out? She got it with Bond's release. She was part of the first batch of holy relics, which are probably ironically the best batch because Mono is shortly after and her relic still holds up. Uh, I feel like a lot of the newer relics are just kind of mid. So yeah, she got lucky. She got her holy relic early, which were with the better batch of relics, in my opinion. I think, yeah, she, she got her holy relic with, when. Uh... When Bond got his holy relic, right? So, mm -hmm. so she got it even before she came out. The other, uh, Lilia, the red Lilia got it, right? And then this one came out. I might mix it up, but I think I'm, I think I'm correct there. Um, you know, give the new named Roxy or whatever, new named whatever those characters, holy relics, to actually help the team as well. And it, we got like a, a, a like actual sub meta, like real, like on the cusp of meta team that you know not many people are going to be using because it's still going to take like a, a very good amount of effort to build yeah i agree this would be a legit team to chase after if you're like i've already been chasing this name as a free to play because it's like the best option for future proofing your pvp team you can't be chasing all these festivals and try to six six the festivals so what you want to do is spread out your diamond spending yes you're gonna run run low, run low on coins but, like, in return, you're getting a more quality, like, character lineup for, like, future-proofing your team on PvP because you're 6-6-ing these ultimates when you're saving these coins. I'm at 2,000 coins plus because I've been saving since uh, the release of Trader Meliodas. And there hasn't been a catastrophe banner since Lilia. So I've just been going for the PvE characters that are good festivals and just 1-6-ing them or 2-6-ing them at most, depending on the rotation, and then dumping all my actual, like, resources into the catastrophe team because actually paying off for pvp really heavily paying off it does take investment with holy relics but once again you can just go for those pve festivals and get a copy of them you're good to go but the ones that do are just gonna have a lot of fun using them so and the team's fun i agree that's it those are my hopes yep me too babe because these characters just look really good as well right the, yeah. the original character design for grand cross is just undefeated I completely agree with this guy. Uh, the characters for the catastrophes are so good. Like, they're so fun to use. I don't know if any of you guys have actually, like, legitly used the team, like, where it's built up. But I promise you, if you were to build the team up and uh, try it, you'd probably think it's the most fun team in the game. Uh, I, I under, like, I understand Bond's the meta right now. and But, like, if you play Bond team, you must, like, get so bored. Because, like, it's not even a fun team compared to the OC team. Because you're doing crits, you're hitting hard, you're surviving. It's just a all-around fun team to run especially when you see mono pop off and lilia hit crits it's just a fun team but that's gonna be it for this video guys thanks for watching remember go go help this man get the 2000 or 250,000 subs i would like if you guys help me get the 2k subs and uh yeah thanks nagadu for making this video just remember guys this this is a team that he the running his team that he's running is a bit more on the needs to go first team I don't know with the evasion food if it would work as well. Whenever, whenever the uh, buff or the dumb rules go away, I will give this team out a try going a second. But I don't think it will be as consistent. And my sorrel, my green sorrel is only one six, so I don't think I'm probably going to use them to be honest. Even though it's it's a great option, I just need to get more dupes. So I will try to make this team uh, go a second because I do have a six six gen. It's just I don't have any cosmetics upgraded because I'm waiting for the new 
Catastrophe Banner to drop, so as soon as that next Catastrophe Banner drops, whatever the unit is, Blue Shen, Red Valenti, whatever it is, as long as the unit's good, I'll be maxing out their cosmetics and trying to get them 6-6, and showing you guys an actual showcase for that new Catastrophe unit, which should be really, really soon. Could be the next banner on JP, could be the banner after the next festival, who knows, it's probably within the next month at most, so thanks to all for watching, I'll see y'all later, peace.